Hi Hermits, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dara and today we are going to be talking about three Dracula retellings that I cannot wait to sink my teeth into. I'm sorry, I just had to. Vampire humour. Um, so if you know anything about me at all, you will know that I love a vampire. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favourite TV show of all time. I could probably quote every single episode verbatim and yeah I am not ashamed I'm not ashamed of that fact <laughs> um and I also have a love of gothic literature so you probably already know at this point that I studied English at university and a big chunk of that was studying gothic novels including Dracula and over the past let's say few months to a year I have picked up a few Dracula retellings that I'm really eager to dive into. Now, I'm fairly selective because I do love classics and I love like source material and I love um, very well crafted books. So I don't necessarily pick up any and every retelling that is up for grabs, but I do have three that I'm really, really looking forward to. So one of them I have physically, the other two are on my Kindle, but let me share those with you now. So the first Dracula retelling that I cannot wait for is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is on my list of the 22 books that I want to read in 2022. I've just heard beautiful, beautiful things about this book. I'll pop the link to that video in the description box, by the way, in case you're curious about the other things that are a high priority for me this year. But let's focus on this one for now. So A Dowry of Blood tells the story of the Brides of Dracula from the perspective of Constanta, the first Bride of Dracula. And I believe that this is um, told in second person. So it's almost like she is speaking to Dracula as she narrates the book and I believe in the opening pages she also um, makes it clear that she has just killed him so um, you know going in strong um, but I've heard that this is a really interesting and creative analysis of toxic relationships abusive relationships and the love that can still be there even though it can obviously like, be a very damaging hurtful environment and so I don't necessarily think it's going to be just light and fun but I do think it is going to speak to those parts of my soul that love anything a bit gothic and a bit dark. I've also heard that it is supremely quotable um, and a couple of people that I follow who are hardcore annotators they like, literally are underlining every line in the book so I, I'm looking forward to some exquisite writing here. The next Dracula retelling that I'm looking forward to reading is Anno Dracula by Dacre Stoker. And this is, the, I believe it's the first in a series, um, but it's reimagined as though Queen Victoria remarried after Prince Albert died and she married Dracula. So it's kind of telling the story of what society is like when the consort is Dracula and I just think it's going to be fun like this that one whereas this one feels like deep that one just feels like it's going to be like a silly fun goofy time and sometimes you just need that especially when you're dealing with a topic that could be considered quite dark like vampires and murder and drinking people's blood so um, I think that might be a little bit of a reprieve. And then the final Dracula retelling that I'm really looking forward to reading is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargraves. And this, again, tells the story of Dracula's brides, but it's, it gives me very different vibes to A Diary of Blood. So this tells the story of two young girls. So I believe they're just turning 17, they're twin sisters, and they are kidnapped so they're taken away from the traveler community that they were raised in and enslaved and while they are like, working as slaves they start hearing about this myth of um i think they call him the dragon who 
accept girls as gifts so we know that that's going to be Dracula and it's really telling their story as they experience that but I kind of like that it gives it gives you like the early days of Dracula's Bride it's not just defining them by their relationship with him so the story doesn't start with them like meeting him or being bitten by him there's more to their character than that and that's something that appeals to me. I've heard wonderful things about this author's writing. I haven't read any of her books, but I do own a couple. Um, Louise Savage, whose channel I will link to below, love her content, really, really raves about um, Kieran's work. So I'm definitely looking forward to, like I said, sinking my teeth in. Um, but there you have it. Those are the three Dracula retellings that I'm so excited to pick up soon. As always, if you have read any of these, I would love to hear your spoiler-free thoughts in the comments below. And if you know of any other Dracula retellings that you think are worth my time, then leave me your recommendations too. I'm always grateful for a new addition to my wish list. So um, leave me a comment, like this video if you've liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in my next upload.